Welcome to Max and the Van. This is Max, he's a two-year-old English Springer Spaniel. And this is the van. It's a VW T6 camper van that he shares with his human companion, Owen. Today we're heading north up the M1 and M6, and then on to the town of Ellesmere, where we're staying for a couple of nights while we explore the Llangollen Canal. staying at the Nunes Touring Caravan Park, which is situated on a hill on the outskirts of Ellesmere. The site comprises of three fields and offers adult-only pitches for tents, motorhomes and camper vans. The six acre park has 60 electric hookup points, together with chemical and wastewater disposal facilities. The top and middle field provide level pitches while the third is set on the hillside, giving superb views over the surrounding countryside and the Welsh hills beyond. The three fields share two service blocks that offer award-winning facilities. From the site, you can drop down through the lower field where sheep are often found grazing and head into Ellesmere along the towpath of the Llangollen Canal. The canal leaves the Shropshire Union at Hillston Junction and climbs through the peaceful countryside, passing through the towns of Whitchurch and Ellesmere, to cross the border into Wales near Chirk. The waterway started life as part of the Ellesmere Canal and was rebranded as the Llangollen in the 1980s. On the outskirts of town we find the Canal and River Trust's Ellesmere Yard and it's a well-preserved example of a canal maintenance depot dating back to the early 1800s. The canal office was built in 1806 as the administrative headquarters of the Ellesmere Canal Company. Just after the maintenance yard, the main line bears off to the right, while ahead a narrow arm runs into the town and terminates at Ellesmere Wharf. In its heyday, the wharf was a hive of activity, and most of the buildings were built by the Earl of Bridgewater. The brick warehouse dates from the second half of the 19th century and retains its Shropshire Union lettering. Hellsmere Junction is the great place to stop for a while to watch the passing boats. Just along the towpath we find the busy hire boat base of Blackwater Meadow Marina. The area around Ellesmere offers great walking and it's worth taking time to explore the area properly. After a gentle walk back to the campsite, it's time to settle down for the night. The Llangollen Canal boasts not one but two grand aqueducts and this morning we're off to visit both. The famous Pont Cassate Aqueduct at Trevor and first its smaller partner at Chirk.
Chirk Aqueduct consists of 10 arches, each with a span of 40 feet, and carries the Llangollen Canal across the Cairiog Valley. It was designed by Thomas Telford for the Ellesmere Canal Company and was completed in 1801 at a cost of £20,898. The railway viaduct, constructed between 1846 and 1848, was the work of Scottish engineer Henry Robertson and was built 30 feet taller than the aqueduct as if to exert its importance. The cast iron trough is 710 foot long and carries boats 70 foot above the river. Originally built with iron plates only at the base of the trough, iron side plates were later added to help alleviate leakage. As you navigate the aqueduct, the waterway crosses the border from England into Wales and at the far end the canal enters Chirk Tunnel. The tunnel is 460 yards long and is designed for a single standard narrowboat, so passing is not possible. The tunnel is one of the first to incorporate a towpath inside. After leaving Chirk, it's only a four-mile drive up the road to Trevor Basin and one of the great wonders of the Canal Age, the Pont Casaste Aqueduct. Trevor is a popular destination both for tourists and boaters alike and can get very busy during the summer months. There's a pain display car park alongside the wharf, while boaters can find public moorings at the far end of the canal arm. The Canal and River Trust's visitor centre is well worth visiting as it houses a collection of historical artefacts dating back to the construction of the aqueduct. Anglo-Welsh narrowboats have a higher base at the wharf, which is ideally placed for navigating the narrow feeder channel that runs up to Llangollen. Before venturing onto the aqueduct, you can take a footpath off to the left and explore a circular trail that drops down to the valley floor and the River Dee. It should be noted, however, that part of the route includes some very steep steps. The trail eventually brings you to the riverside and a picnic spot where there are fine views up to the aqueduct. The return route runs through a pleasant wooded area that borders the river and then turns to climb up the steep hillside immediately below the aqueduct. The immense engineering feat that went into the aqueduct's construction can truly be appreciated from this vantage point.
Nicknamed the Stream in the Sky, the Pont Casaste Aqueduct is a scheduled ancient monument, is Grade 1 listed, and was granted World Heritage status in 2009. Perhaps the greatest feat of engineering on the entire UK canal network, it was designed and built by Thomas Telford and opened in 1805. It has 18 arches, is 12 feet wide, and at 1,007 feet long, it carries the canal 126 feet above the River Dee, making it the longest and tallest aqueduct in the UK. The cast iron trough is supported by 19 enormous pillars, and ox blood was added to the mortar used to bind the masonry in the belief that the blood of a strong animal would help strengthen the structure. Leaving the Pont Casasta Aqueduct at Trevor, it's only a 10 minute drive west to Llangollen. The town, and known as the Gateway to Wales, is a very popular tourist destination and offers lots of visitor attractions. Each year it hosts the world famous International Music Astelford. Today we are taking a gentle 40 minute stroll along the towpath from St Gothlin Wharf to Horseshoe Falls and the start of the canal. From the wharf you can embark on either a horse drawn boat trip along the feeder to the falls or a motorised boat trip which takes you across Pont Casaste Aqueduct. Shortly after leaving the wharf you pass the very popular Llangothlin Basin which offers visiting narrowboats 48 hour moorings. The basin marks the end of navigation except for the trip boats. The canal runs above the fast flowing waters of the River Dee and during its construction had to be hewn out of the rocky hillside. The towpath eventually arrives at the Chainbridge Hotel that clings to the riverbank. The original Chainbridge, built in 1814, was refurbished in 1870 by Sir Henry Robertson, who owned the nearby Brumbo Steelworks. In 1928 the pressure of floodwaters proved too much, causing the bridge to collapse. Undeterred, Sir Henry built the bridge to a much stronger specification in 1929. After passing under the road bridge, it's only a few minutes walk to Horseshoe Falls. Designed by Thomas Telford and completed in 1808, the 406 foot long weir complements the surrounding landscape and the gently sloping meadow beside it makes a popular picnic spot. The weir was constructed to divert water from the River Dee into the Slangothlin Canal and then on to the Shropshire Union. Over 10 million gallons are drawn from the river each day in order to feed the canal system and to help supply South Cheshire with drinking water. An act in 1944 introduced the requirement for accurate monitoring of the volume of water being extracted from the river and as a result the meter house was built in 1947. 
This inconspicuous outlet marks the start of the Slangothlin Canal and the water supply is sufficient to generate a noticeable current, a factor boaters need to allow for when navigating the system. Whether visiting on foot or by boat, Slangothlin has a lot to offer visitors with a towpath walk and boat trips proving to be some of the most popular attractions. If you have enjoyed this video, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon for notifications of further videos.